Hey everybody, welcome to Challenged Athletes Live. My name is Bob Babbitt, really excited for our next guest. He is the winner of the Catalina Marathon overall, uh, four-time Ironman World Championship finisher, 10-time Leadville 100 finisher, kayak the Grand Canyon, and has completed the Leadman, which is one of the craziest events on the planet. Welcome, Mr. one arm Willie Stewart. Willie, how you doing, brother? I'm awesome, Bob. It's great to see you. Always a pleasure. But so how are you hanging in through all this craziness? I know you've sort of been the homeschooling dad anyways. Has it changed what's going on? What's, what's, what's uh, I, you know, I'm stuck at home more only because the kids are here. But when right. they want to go ride bikes, I ride bikes. When they want to go unicycle, I, ride, I go on a unicycle, trampoline. And uh, I'm no good at any of it anymore. So it's great. So take me back. High school. Uh, top wrestler, on top wrestlers in the state, got a scholarship to go to college, and then you're working in the Watergate building in D.C. What happened? You know, so it was a summertime job, and, and uh, it wasn't my career or anything, but I was on top of the Watergate building right above Bob Dole apartment, and uh, I was inside a cooling tower, which is a gigantic fan, and um, a rope came in, and it went over top of the shaft that drove the fan, and it, and it uh, pulled me up into the fan and sliced my arm up like uh, pretty bad. And then it pulled my arm off. I mean, you can see my stump. It's a, there's a, a rope burn right here. And then it cleaned everything from the elbow to the wrist, took my hand off, broke my shoulder, hips. You know, I got really messed up, and I picked my hand up off the ground, gave it to a guy, ran to the edge of the building, went down 15 stories in a basically a debris pan or a trash can lowered to the ground by a crane got up and ran to george washington university hospital about a mile away right down the middle of rush hour traffic uh in new hampshire avenue and, bleeding uh, all over the place yeah i bled quite a bit until the part of the run and then my bicep went up into where my arm cavity was and slowed the bleeding and i I stayed upright all the way up to the hospital door, and that was the that was probably the one of the great life changing moments, you know, in a way horrible. But that my dad met me at the door of the hospital, and that was pretty. Uh, now that I'm a dad, I'm sure that was pretty overwhelming for him. So you're in the hospital, and what did you know about uh, people with disabilities, uh, people trying to become athletes again? Because your identity, wrestler, rugby player, you're you're an athlete. That's who you are. How were you looking at yourself while you were in the hospital? What did you see for the future? I, you know, I, I did not want to be a disabled person because everything about disabilities at that point, 1980, was, wasn't a good thing to be. It was tough. And uh, I was depressed, isolated, and lonely. And all of that uh, lasted for years. So what I remember, there was a part, and how many brothers and sisters did you have? There's six boys in my family and two girls. So you're in the hospital and your mom's there and you've got an orange yeah. and you talk to your mom to peel it for you because you're missing an arm. That's gonna be tough. What'd she do? So I tossed to my mom. A lot of people who knew or know my mom, she's not really friendly. And uh, she threw the orange back at me and said, peel it yourself. And uh, that stuck that's with me today because she taught me that, boy, if you're gonna get up, you're gonna get up on your own and you're gonna move forward on your own. So a little tough problem went a long way. So while you're in DC, and I remember watching video of you playing rugby, you're a rugby player before, you come back, and you were an angry rugby player. I think you're one of the first guys to get tossed out. Rugby is all about no autopsy, no foul. And here you're getting tossed out of games because you were brutal. How important was getting that anger out playing rugby? Well, I, it was like, how important is it to stay out of jail? <laughs> it's kind of big. Right. And uh, I, when I, it probably was one of the most courageous things I ever did personally was to step on a rugby pitch with one arm and no one expected anything out of me. And I guess um, I expected a lot from myself. And I think I was way better with one than I ever was with two. 
And uh, I was way more focused. And I became captain of the Washington Lightning Club, which was uh, one of the greatest of my life was to lead that team to the national championship that, in San Diego. So what brought you to Colorado and getting involved with disabled sports? You know, I was a rugby player and a bike messenger in Washington, D.C. And uh, at that point, I started meeting a few people with disabilities and uh, I helped out. I really liked it a lot. And so I went and worked at the Breckenridge Outdoor Education Center in Breckenridge, Colorado. And uh, I was a ski school director of the adaptive program at Breckenridge. And that, that much shaped who I am today and led me to CAF. And what led you, I've got this photo behind me of, uh, of our boy, Jim McLaren. And, you know, you've seen it. He's, he's the guy. So you met Jim in Colorado, and that led you to CAF San Diego Triathlon Challenge. Yeah, it's kind of a funny story, Bob. But Jim, Jim's brother came into the office and said, hey, can you take my brother skiing? And I said, I can take anyone skiing. And I met Jim, and um, amazing being. And he was a quadriplegic at that time, and I felt – he was probably one of the coolest people I ever met in my life. And I, I wanted to be able to do what he did. And he's the one that steered me towards CAF. And I went down there to the water park, jumped in the Loyal Cove as my first competitive swim in my life. And I, I finished that race and I was pretty proud of myself. That is so cool. And yeah, so uh, Gaff, you've got photos of, of, uh, of Willie from San Diego Triathlon Challenge. And they're like, how did you finish with one arm? And it was hard. And then I got arm from to Xterra about a year later. And man, Xterra really opened the doors. I, I, I love that thing too, and I miss it dearly. But Xterra was the first time I ever wore an arm at an event. And the arm fell off. But I went back to kayaking the Grand Canyon. And your prosthetic, you know, your $25,000 prosthetic arm damn near killed you. And it never came up. It sits at the bottom of the river. But how many people do you know, Bob, that carry an extra arm? And so I had an extra arm in the whole boat, pulled it out, paddled the rest of the 248 miles. So here you are, a four-time Ironman finisher, and you decide you want to do Leadville 100 mountain bike. And... They weren't very open to a one-arm guy attempting to do Leadville, correct? Yeah, I was I was shocked. I did Iron Man. What you know Iron Man is it changes the way you think about yourself. It lets, Iron Man lets you believe that you can do anything. And uh, you know, Iron Man four times they killed it. And I go to Leadville and they shut the door in my face and said, uh, "You're going to hurt yourself and you're going to hurt somebody else." And so I went in in a disguise, got my race raced on the very back row, like row of parks. And uh, 400 people finished that year that I did. And when you finished it, did the attitude change or did they even realize that you were racing? Uh, Leadville. When I finished it, uh, now Leadville's a challenge athletes all over the place. Let it's, you know, those guys that race that race inspire me. You know, I had Lucas. Muhammad last year and Andre. I mean, I had probably 15 different athletes with disabilities in the race last year. And in the old days, there was no one. No one. It's interesting because obviously at the beginning, Ironman didn't want wheelchair athletes to do Ironman. Boston Marathon didn't want Dick and Rick Hoyt to do, you know, Boston. And Leadville didn't want you <laughs> to do Leadville. And then they realized that not only do can you complete it, but also you can inspire other people. Who's inspired? Who inspires Willie Stewart? Oh, my, my crew, and it's kind of funny. Like with Iron Man, there's people. You know, we go through the list of all the people, but locally here, there's some new athletes. You know, there's little Brooklyn, a little seven year old girl. She inspires me. There's Kevin Holtry, a 55 year old police officer, getting duty. He inspires me. I mean, there's a guy uh, his name is Lance Pounds. 
he inspires me. And they're all different uh, abilities, but they get out there and they do it. And so I'm inspired by, remember Blaze Man, Bob? Blaze Man, Iron Man, ALS. That guy inspired me. And it goes on. You know, I have my buddy, Jimmy, that's always been in my pocket my whole life. And uh, someone that I, you know, I always saw Rudy put his best foot forward, yet he had no foot. He had no leg. And that guy exactly what I want to be. I wanted to be a Rudy. And guess what? A year ago, people would say, they would yell at me when I was racing, and they'd go, go Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> because Rudy became, he was basically the symbol of everybody who was a challenged athlete. So you were, years ago, you told me that sport is, is so great because it makes you whole. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, think about when, um, you know, we're social animals, physical animals, we're spiritual, intellectual, we're all these things. But the one thing that ties my life together to all the goodness and love and things like that is um, the ability to be active outside with us. And then it just happened to be that I, I got better at it. You know, I, tell you, I, just, I told you a long time ago, I would like to do the game. Well, the game accepted me and patted me on the back and said, good job, Willie, with all my friends. And I just want to make sure, just like you, Bob, we'll keep racing until they tell us we can't. And even then, we'll keep going old Bill Bell on and we'll race till we drop. So that's my goal, Bob, because sports actually made me have a community for the rest of my life. And I'm never going to let that community go. So when you decided to do Lead Man, and I think we've got video of, of you at Leadville, but when you decide to do Lead Man, which is 100 mile mountain bike, 100 mile run, uh, 50 mile mar mountain bike, 50 mile run, and the marathon, all in a span of the summer, what the hell? I mean, not like Leadville isn't tough enough on its own, and no challenge athlete, at the, I don't think at that point had done Lead Man. Yeah. So, you know, I I feel bad, but I I like the I like the solitude of racing for 30 hours straight, and I like it. You know, I like the 100, and I like the combination of the Redville 100, thinking that you weren't allowed to do that race because people thought you would hurt yourself, and everyone said, well, you'll never be able to do the back-to-back. -back. And uh, and I thought it was important for someone with a disability, if they can do it, to stick their nose in the game. And I say this to all my brothers and sisters, always stick your nose in the game, or you can't be a messenger. And we are strong, powerful leaders when we tow the line. So in the last year and a half or so, CAF Idaho, right? All of a sudden, two of your favorite things. You live in Idaho, and here comes Challenge Athlete Foundation Idaho. How cool has that been for you? Uh, you know, it, if I really think about it, it kind of it brings uh, tears of happiness. Because you have this program that looks at all people with all abilities. And we tie everyone together through people with disabilities. But I think people are celebrating the fact that we're here, we're role models to everyone who doesn't believe in themselves. We are the people that step forward, carry the torch, and say, you can carry this torch too. Get up, get out, and get active. And that's CAF Idaho. You know how it is. Our guys get a lot done. The kids that participate in sports do better in school. The husbands and wives that play sports are better family members. I mean, everything moves through the active lifestyle. CF Idaho says, come on board, we'll take you all. So as somebody who has been a CF ambassador forever and ever and ever, what message do you have? Obviously, so many of our athletes out there now are stuck at home, like all of us are. What message do you have to help our athletes power through what are really tough times? You know, I, I this is a, kind of a difficult conversation to have, but I look at everyone who has an inner athlete in them. And even the people that are newly injured or born with a disability, parents with a kid born with a disability, the quicker you get in your mind that anything is possible, it may take help. Like Noah and Lucas, it may take help. Someone pushing that chair or pulling that chair. But the fact is, when you get out there, you fire up the next generation. But the more we stay hidden, the more we're out of out of the limelight, the more it's difficult for us to get the next generation going. So keep in that mind that you carry a torch for the generation coming up and never put that torch down. Love it. Okay, rapid fire, Willie. 
These are short, short answers. Okay, best CAF memory. You know, I, I, I think about all the memories I have CAF, and one, one in particular, though, is the day that Noah and Lucas, a family, the Aldrich family from Idaho, walked up on the stage at the Waldorf Astoria, and uh, I got to interview them as new members of our CAF family. And uh, I think they're a transformative moment for the rest of my life, seeing Noah and Lucas stand on the stage and, and during a standing ovation. That's the coolest thing. And go to comfort food. Oh, uh, well, you know, I, I, I put a, a cherry pie on a hamburger. That, that seems to work for me. <laughs> now, I, I don't see you as a TV guy, but uh, any TV stuff you've been doing while you're stuck inside? <laughs> you know, this is funny stuff, but I never watched Parks and Rec. And so the kids and I are binge watching the Parks and Rec, and I tell you, that's a funny show. Favorite book or podcast? You know, I... I love the history of civilization by Will Durant, but my favorite book is probably uh, Confederacy at Dunces by John Kennedy O'Toole. Very cool. And for our audience, if you have questions for Willie, feel free to send them in. Person that you miss seeing the most during this, this time when you're isolated? You, you know, Bob, I have pods of families from New York City, which, you know, my heart goes out to you. I love I love the races, Westchester, New York City Tribe, all the people. I love the San Francisco, Escape from Alcatraz. And then you go to my SDTC crowd, my, my CAF crowd in San Diego. So, I mean, my, uh, my memory is uh, everyone in this country. And anyone who's struggling, you're my brother and sister, and, and I stay positive. What, uh, what place... You what well you said all those different places so when you when things clear up you want to go you want to go back out and do everything yeah and i i like to i hope things clear up i'd like to be back with my ex terra family and now i mean those are those are the things that float my boat take my son and daughter and wife with me whenever i race and i love that go to music to help you power through are you a music guy yeah we you know, you know i'm a mid-atlantic boy from the east coast and Springs. Oh, he's yes. my boy. So what's what's your favorite thing to do with the kids? I yeah. you know, I haven't played this pandemic. I'm with them all the time and they're pretty darn fun. But I, I love going out on the trails with them. You know, I'll take them on a mountain bike. They both have mountain bikes. They both like to run. It's fun hanging on the trails with the kids. And remember, we're, we're in Idaho. We're a big uh, we're like a big outdoor playground for skate. So in my backyard to trail and go to Canada. Toughest thing you've ever done? Wow. I think courage. I think one of the toughest ones, even though I did some of those long 100 mile runs and bunch of things, it was the courage to step back on the playing field. That probably. Was it. What words did you like to hear from a coach when you were <laughs> working with coaches? So, most of every coach threw me off for the team. And they usually say, you can't do that. And uh, for some reason, when you say you can't do that, I'm motivated. <laughs> what word do you hate to hear from a coach? <laughs> uh, yeah. that, what I hate to hear, don't you think you should hang it up? It's time to retire. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, I look, when I look back, you like cross-country skiing, you're in the disabled, uh, the uh, um, uh, Disabled USA Hall of Fame. You're, you're, you've accomplished so much. Is there one thing that stands out over all of them? Because I look at Hurt 100, all that type of stuff. You, you've, you've done it all. I don't know if there's a more versatile athlete on the planet than Willie Stewart. You know, I mean, you touched on Leadville. You touched on, remember in Nordic skiing, my first two races, and this is able bodied racing, but I finished last. And most people quit when they get their right handed to them like that. And then standing on the podium with the silver medal in Salt Lake was pretty big. Standing on the first line of Iron Man, yeah. you're in right, you are know, an Iron Man, pretty big. So there's a lot of those pretty big. Terra World Championships and winning that, pretty big. But most of the time, it's the people I get to help. That kind of, I heard Rudy and Travis say that. I love that. There's nothing better. So yeah. a couple of questions from our audience. Will we see you in Leadville this year? Oh, yeah. If, you know, it's going to be tricky because Leadville might, I think Leadville could go to a self-supported, which I'm pretty good at. Yeah. But if things 
change. I'll be in Leadville, no doubt. And then I'll hopefully I'll be in Maui too. And then I'll be at SDTC in San Diego. Favorite race fuel for uh, Leadville 100? Oh, you know, it's so weird. It's not really a plug, but I love the banana. Yeah. <laughs> Good man. Willie, as always, thank you so much for taking time. Thanks for everything you do to make Challenge Athletes Foundation great. You've been, you, you've just been a real special ambassador to all of our athletes out there. Hey, Bob, you are one of my heroes. Thank you. Willie Stewart has been our guest again, Challenged Athletes Live. Check us out on Thursday morning and tell your friends. <laughs>